Welcome to Essentials to Heal Yourself. I'm Laura Lee Humphreys. So today's episode is number four in the series where we're exploring seven unconscious beliefs that keep you from healing, that keep you feeling small and insignificant and powerless in your life and in terms of how you view your health, your body, and how you care for it. So as I go through all of these seven beliefs and understand that they can be kind of tricky conversations and yet they're very direct to the point conversations and topics that must be looked at and dealt with and talked about. It's not about running and hiding and pretending and that things don't exist. It's not about distractions. It's about facing what is. The hard, core, raw truth of what is and how you are, of who you are, that has led you to the place where your health is now compromised to one degree or another. If you cannot understand or are you're not willing to understand the role that your mindset and your beliefs and your emotional health play in the state of your physical health, then you are severely limiting your ability to heal yourself of anything. The non-tangibles of yourself, your mindset, your emotional makeup, have a massive impact on what your health, your physical body does. It has a massive impact on whether or not you heal or you get worse within whatever health condition that you have. It's also one of the core underlying root causes of any kind of a health condition to begin with. And because it's a non-tangible part of ourselves, we have a difficult time going there because we also don't know what to do with it. We have not been taught. So one of the reasons why I'm doing this series, which I encourage you to listen all the way through so that you can understand what I'm teaching you here. One of the reasons why I'm doing this series of these seven unconscious beliefs is so that you can begin to identify them and then start looking at how you are acting them out or to what degree they play out in your life so that you can then begin to understand how they are imp impacting your health and take steps to undo them or come out from underneath these unconscious beliefs so that you can heal, so that you can feel more empowered about your life and your health. So today's conversation, these next two beliefs that I'm going to share with you today are, as all of them are, really big, important conversations. <clears throat> and in many ways, this next belief, the fourth out of seven belief, really addresses the crux of the issue. That if you can really wrap your brain around this, uh, this belief, then it will unlock a lot of of answers, a lot of energy, a lot of resources within you to allow you to heal yourself from whatever the thing is that you're dealing with. So this fourth belief is all about running deep patterns and beliefs of a victim powerless mentality. And I knew on the surface, you may think, well, I don't have that, Laurel, I'm good. It's like, well, let's dig deeper. Because I have yet to find anyone walking the planet today who does not have threads and patterns of these deep beliefs running. So it's running deep patterns of beliefs of a mentality that directs you to feeling powerless, even victimized or being a victim. And then using your wounds from the traumatic experiences in your life to manipulate and control others. In other words, using your wounds as weapons. And there's a lot to unpack with that one right there. So let's dive in. This is really, as I mentioned, a very core central topic to all healing and all disease. And it has to do with the fact that at the core of every healing issue, the core of every disease issue, it is an issue of power. And ultimately, it's a spiritual issue of who you actually are, of being able to recognize your power and what you've been doing with it. 
how you have been managing it or misusing it, abusing it or using it in a way that benefits yourself and others. And I know this is maybe a new approach or a new angle to things, but I'm doing it also from the understanding from the perspective that you are an energy being. If you can't understand that, then you're going to miss much of this. As an energy being, you're constantly generating life force energy. That is our, your innate makeup. That's how you and I are made. That is indisputable. You cannot ignore that fact. You can't run for it from it forever. You can't ignore it or deny it. The way that you use your life force energy is an expression of your power. Whether you're using your life force energy to empower and uplift and to build and create and nurture life. Or are you using your life force energy, i.e. your power, to manipulate, to destroy, to cut down, to denigrate, to destroy, to hurt, to, to maim other people and yourself? Ultimately, if you're doing a lot of that with your life force energy, i.e. your power, what you're actually doing is you are honoring and worshiping the cycle of death, destruction, and disease. Point blank. The end of the day, when you look at in the main overall, the vast majority of how you use your power, whether it's primarily focused in the direction of uplifting and healing and helping and growing and, and nurturing and all the things, then you're using your power in accordance or in harmony with natural and cosmic law. And you're using your energy, your life force energy to expand creation, to nurture and honor life. On the flip side, if when you look overall at your life and in the main, the vast majority of how you use your life force energy, i.e. your power is in the direction to cut down and to hurt and to blame and to manipulate and to take from and to guilt trip and to destroy and erode away things. That is, as I mentioned, moving into the direction of honoring, worshiping the process of destruction, disease, and death. So when we look at healing, when we look at health issues, it is a statement of your, by your body to yourself saying that how you have been using your power, what you have been using your life force energy on, what you have putting, been putting your focus, your attention, your money, your loyalty onto is not in alignment with life. That the things you have been doing thus far have been leading to an inevitable result or conclusion that results in the degradation and erosion away of the health and the tissues and cells of your body. In other words, disease. That's why I say that the issue of all healing is an issue of power at its root. How you are using your life force energy. And when it comes to this, especially with someone who has had issues for years and years and years and years and years, or something that's so advanced, I know this is a very touchy topic because they don't even want to have this conversation because it's so difficult to look at. And it's too easy to throw the blame off on circumstances and other people and all the things and everything else in their life, except for the fact that they made choices that inevitably ended them up to where they are today. That's a very difficult thing to look at, and I get it. I understand that. That's why so many people don't even want to have this conversation, which is why I'm having it with you today. Because it needs to be brought to the forefront. It needs to be understood. The issue of power is a very tricky one because, number one, we've not been taught about it. 
partly because I mean, that goes along with the fact that we have not been taught that we are an energetic, spiritual, creative being full of power. That has been eradicated for the most part out of our society's mindset and vernacular. Because I've, as I've said in other, other episodes within the series, the societal influences and all the conditioning and all the voices and all the propaganda, the narrative that the powers that were, the powers that be, that influence industries and the media don't want you to know these things because it benefits them, not you. So when we look at the power, the issue of power, then it ties directly in with all of this social conditioning of how we've been taught, what we've been taught to look at, what we've been taught to ignore. Primarily at the root of all of that is the fact that you have power. Because if you had power and you knew it and you knew how to wield it and you could recognize when you were using it properly or where you could recognize when you were misusing it, you would be living and thinking and doing in a very different manner, in a manner that would, quite frankly, put a lot of industries out of business, put a lot of corporations out of business. Because those industries and corporations and also the healthcare system and a lot of the medical, the educational, the media systems, all of those industries run on the fact that you don't get this about yourself. They depend upon you not knowing your own power. They depend upon you buying into all the societal messaging and all the conditioning that tells you that you don't matter, that you can't make change, that you don't have the wherewithal, the resources, the intelligence, the power to do anything different. And also, so much of all this is societal influence and conditioning and all the voices, what do they tell you to do? They tell you to chase after status, shiny, bright objects, money, follow what everybody else does, says and does, follow the herd, don't think for yourself, because if you think for yourself, then you're going to stand out and some big wolf in some manner is going to come over and punish and harm you in some way. There's going to be a consequence if you speak up and think for yourself. That's a deep societal programming. Recognize it. Start observing it occurring within your life with other people and how you respond to things and how people in your life respond to things. So much of that at its root, as I mentioned, is designed and encouraged, encouraging you to give your power away, to feed these corporations and industries that have billions of dollars that can pay for all kinds of advertising, that can buy off politicians, do all the lobbying in, in government, influence all the people, so that you believe that they have more power than you. When the truth of the matter is that your energy, your life force energy is the very thing fueling those industries and corporations. And without you in mass, without us in mass, they cannot stay in business. So recognize that. That's the, one of the biggest scams that is running in our society today. That's why this is such a difficult conversation. So when it comes to your health, the same things apply. So when we have our life experiences, a lot of them are hard, a lot of them are fun, a lot of them are kind of neutral and just kind of like blah, blah. But then we always have, everybody always has one or two things, experiences or events that just cut you at the core and can take you out, that are very traumatic, very difficult, very painful. That's how life is structured. There's always a couple of things that we have to deal with, or more, depending on the person and how they respond to everything. But there's always those core experiences that are defining moments in our lives. 
And whether or not we are able to rise above the trauma and the pain determines how we live the rest of our lives, how we can expand and grow, or if we contract, stay the same, and lose our self further into the minutia of all of the social influences and voices that tell us that we don't matter. We all have some of those experiences. And they're designed to test you to see what you will do with your power, how you will respond. Will you evolve and grow or will you cave in? The travesty with all of these experiences is that because there is so much trauma and so much hard hitting emotions that that just wipe us out, that hit us to the core. It's like, how do I even begin to deal with this or make sense of it or think about it or, you know, all of these emotions of the rage, the anger, the sadness, the grief, the blah, 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 blah. We don't even know where to begin. It can knock you out. And so it, I, it's very easy to get lost in burying yourself with alcohol and drugs and food and all the sugar and all the things just to numb the pain because you don't even know where to begin to deal with all this trauma. Humanity is a traumatized race. We inherit it from our ancestors. It's in our genetics. Just look at the history, the known history, of the human race for the last 500 years. You'll be hard pressed to find periods of time when there was not war and rape and pillage and trauma and conquering and all kinds of mayhem and destruction. Individuals, political groups, corporations, people, factions who worship the process of disease, destruction, and death. As a result, as humanity dealing with all of that, our ancestors, our grandparents, our great grandparents had all kinds of difficult things. They were not equipped. They were not taught on how to get through them. They just had to do the best they can, put one foot in front of the other and talk to each other and take care of things in the moment the best they could. The imprint of the trauma, of the emotional pain, the anguish, the grief, the, the betrayal, all the things that is embedded within our genetics, within our DNA is handed down from generation to generation, not just within the DNA itself, but within the lifestyle, the way one generation teaches their children on how to think, how to respond, how to eat, how to behave, how to take care of themselves. Culturally, the trauma is passed on. Genetically, trauma is passed on. So here we are today with that stuff in our, in our background, in our heritage, our genetics, our culture. Our society is not equipped to even deal with this in the main. Yes, there are therapists, this, the, there are protocols and the things. They're more kind of on the fringe. They're available if you know to look for them. They're there, but you have to exert yourself. You've got to do the work, the effort to go find them to, so that you can heal yourself, so you can understand all the stuff that's going on inside of you. But in the main, society is not set up to help you with all of that emotional stuff. Instead, what society teaches you to do is numb yourself, distract yourself, sugarcoat it with drugs and alcohol and food and sugar and all the things, brush it under the rug, pretend it doesn't exist, and just keep marching on like an automaton, keep giving away your humanity, just keep marching on because you're worth 100 bucks an hour or whatever the thing is. You got to still show up for work. All you're worth is whatever the corporation that you work for determines that you're worth, hence your salary. That is such a trap. It's a, it's a societal conditioning trap that keeps us disempowered and feeling small and insignificant. And the way our society is set up is that everything, everywhere you look, the media, movies, books, TV, Netflix, YouTube, on and on and on, all of this stuff in our society, for we, wherever we find information, it's all pointed at keeping you in this state of fear, anxiety, and stress, telling you to shove under the rug all of the emotional stuff, numb it out, 
distract yourself, anything but to look within and learning how to deal with all the emotional trauma. So what is the result of this? Depending on the age that the trauma was occurred, oftentimes within the first seven years of life, especially if there's any kind of abuse, and most especially over the top if there's sexual abuse, any time in the formative years when there's abuse or trauma or hurt or things that occur that are very impactful for us as a child, that creates a very strong emotional imprint. And if, it, let's say at age seven, something happened. If that child at age seven is not able to talk about resolve and, and deal with that experience and so that they can move on, their psychological and emotional and spiritual development gets stuck at age seven. They can't move on beyond that point. A part of them cannot move on. Even though the rest of their body, rest of their psychology goes on to age 12, 16, 20, 25, whatever, into adulthood, there's still an aspect of you that's stuck at age seven, at age 12, or whatever the age was. Even at age 30, if you had some really hard, heavy, heavy hitting thing that hits you and knocked you to your knees. The development stops when trauma is interjected and we're not able to deal with the emotional fallout from those experiences. As a result, in the main, our society is adult bodies running around doing life and yet inside, the level of consciousness has gotten stuck in the childhood years because the development has not been able to complete itself. When that happens, there's not been the opportunity, the instruction, the resources, whatever is needed. And so, as a society, and this is one of the reasons, quite frankly, why our society is so dysfunctional and has so many problems, is because psychologically, emotionally, spiritually, so many people are stuck in a consciousness that is the level of a child. Rather than having been able to finish their developmental processes to where emotionally, psychologically, spiritually, they are adults. There's a vast difference in the range of consciousness and the thought processes and the emotional health so I encourage you just to observe this, look at your own life, look at some of the experiences you've had. Are there areas that you feel like you've gotten stuck? And it doesn't take a lot to recognize that if you have or not, because you'll feel the emotional twinge. That's what gives it rise to emotional issues and patterns of unhealthy behavior. They all go back to those traumas. The result of this is that not having had the opportunity to fully complete the developmental cycle of the psychology of the mind, the emotion, emotional development, then we develop coping habits and patterns like codependency, manipulation, guilt, producing guilt in others. We use our wounds as weapons because we don't know how to deal with them. And so we pull, we've learned to pull them out to use as a tool to get what we want, to get other people to do what we want them to do, to get out of taking ownership and responsibility for something, for making so that we don't have to take ownership. We can blame something or someone else. This produces a very crippling, victim, disempowered consciousness. It all comes back to we don't know what to do. And so now we're not willing to do anything about it because we've been able to figure out how we can use this woundedness as a tool to get what we want, to control and manipulate others. If this is you, or if you know someone who's in this position, then I can assure you they're not interested in healing anything. They are more invested in using those traumas, those wounds as a tool of manipulation to continue getting what they want, to milk out of others, to take, 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 take. What are they taking? They're taking life force energy 
from other people, other situations. They are taking power away from other people because they don't know how to recognize it and reclaim it within themselves. That's why I say the issue of healing at its core is an issue of power. When you are in a state where you can't or won't take responsibility for your actions, you remain in a perpetual child level of consciousness. You're expecting someone outside of you to take care of things, an adult or an authority figure, a job, a paycheck, a corporation, a doctor, a spouse, a friend, a mother, a parent, anyone but you to actually take ownership and responsibility for your life and your health. As long as you're in that position, you cannot heal. Because healing requires that you reclaim your energy. Healing requires that you reclaim your power to recognize how you've done your life, how you've responded to things. It requires that you learn how to recognize how you've been using your energy, learn how to recognize that there are ways to help you do the emotional healing work. There's people out there. You just have to be willing to open up and receive and to become teachable that takes a great deal of courage to step into the unknown it takes a great deal of holding on to the faith the hope that it's possible and as you do so as you step into that own unknown as you start to learn new things you gradually step by step reclaim your power and you recognize, wow, I can make a change here. I can do something different. That's what puts you on the path to healing. So to wrap up this fourth unconscious belief about running deep beliefs and patterns of victim helpless mentality, then here's a couple of action takers I encourage, I offer you. So when faced with a challenge, just think of recent or or several years ago, but think of a time when you were faced with a challenge or a health-related issue or illness or a financial challenge. Think about how you responded to that. What emotions came up for you? What thoughts came up for you? What dialogues did you have with other people? What were the words that you said? How many of those things reflected a stance that you believed that you could not make any changes? How many of those words and emotions reflected a state where you felt like you were incapable or powerless? Those are the core things that give rise to insecurity and lack of confidence and lack of self-worth. Begin to identify how you are running those patterns and how they show up for you. Yes, hard conversations, hard look at yourself, brutal, honest, raw truth, and yet they're cru crucial if you want to heal anything. Second idea, second action taking thing that you can do is set aside argument, criticism, debate, judgment, whatever. Set aside your ego and simply ask a friend or a family member to be completely honest with you in their assessment of you. Ask them if they feel manipulated and controlled by you. If they feel like they have to tiptoe around on and walk on eggshells around you so that they won't upset you. Become aware of whether or not you're doing that pattern. Become aware of whether or not you're using your wounds as weapons to manipulate and control other people to get what you want because you don't understand that you have power within you. Just observe, be willing to observe and do experiments. All right. Okay, next, the fifth unconscious belief that prevents you from healing. And it's really tied to the fourth that we just talked about, but this is where you're very focused in the past. You're directing your energy into keeping your past alive rather than being focused in the present moment, which is where you need your energy and your intention in order to heal anything. So this does, as I said, couple, and, and it's, a, it's a close sister to the previous one. 
When you have all of this unresolved stuff from your past, the difficult times, the emotional woundedness, all the things that, that experiences where you just could not find in your resolution or closure for, all of your energy is there. Yet, when you are doing the, the work of healing your body, you need to rebuild your body. It takes a lot of effort, time, focus, choices, activities, and decisions here and now of what your body needs from you so it can rebuild and cleanse itself. Activities like looking at how you're eating, making different choices in your diet, choosing real nutritious food rather than crap food that has no nutritional value, being willing to do the work of cleansing and detoxing your body and it sits work, being willing to follow the seven natural laws of health, which are like the food, getting out into nature, walking, connecting with the earth, taking time out to meditate and connect with your spiritual inner core self of cultivating a, a relationship with your core self, scheduling regular consistent time to move your body, to exercise gently if you need to, or more aggressively if you can, but to do some movement and exercising and stre stretching. Looking at the quality of water that you drink, drinking enough water, filtering it, having it pure water that's going into you, looking at the products in your house, your cosmetics, your cleaning products, all the things, the laundry dip, soaps and all the things, going through all of that, making decisions about, oh my gosh, all of this stuff is full of toxic ingredients and then taking the time, making a schedule to gradually switch all those things over to non-toxic things. Having difficult yet honest conversations with people in your life to clean up past baggages, clean up misunderstandings, to clean up the sticky, messy relationships. Because as long as those are festering in your life, I can guarantee you they contribute to disease. All of this stuff your body requires from you today in current present time. It takes energy, it takes focus, it takes your life force energy, it takes your power in order to do this, to give this to yourself. If your energy is all sucked up into keeping your past alive, ruminating over and being triggered by every little thing that comes at you that reminds you of what happened when you were three or what happens or you know, I'm this way because my parents got divorced when I was five and I never got... All of the stories that we tell ourselves, look at that. If you are always giving an excuse, always telling a story as to why you can't do something, always giving in a story or blaming something or someone from your past as to why you are the way you are today, you are financing your past and keeping it alive and you are bound to repeat it. That prevents you from healing because your energy is not in current time. Your energy, your life force energy is stuck in all the other things 20 years ago rather than today. That's why emotional healing work is crucial to physically healing anything in your body. And as I said before, that is why the issue, core issue of any healing is an issue of power. You have to reclaim your energy, your life force energy. Stop feeding the past and keeping it alive. Because when you can unplug from the past, when you can finally forgive and let go and find resolution and forgive yourself and stop judging yourself and judging the other person, when you can finally find peace and resolution and acceptance, that frees up so much of your energy, I can't even tell you how important, how impactful that is. It could startle you until you experience it for yourself. Speaking from experience, that frees up so much energy that you now have access to. It frees up your being. You're collecting yourself from the past so that your being as all of the pieces and parts of you, yourself, are here in current time. That's a lot of energy that you have available 
to do the things you need to do today, here and now to take care of your body and to heal. So I encourage you just to take all of this in, absorb it, think about it, assess yourself. How are you giving away your power? To whom? What stories and excuses and rationalizations and justifications and games are you playing with yourself? It's just so that you don't have to reclaim your power and own it. Because until you do that, I promise you cannot fully heal. Point blank. So with this belief being focused in the past, Here's a couple of action steps I want you to start to pay attention to. Look at the words that you speak to yourself every day. Whether it's just the mundane stuff as you're getting ready for your day, going about doing errands, talking to people at work, or your family or whatever. Start tuning into the nature of your words, the tone of your words. How critical and negative and pessimistic are they? Or is the tone of your words, the underlying feeling and emotion or energy of your words, more optimistic and supportive and loving and kind? Not just the words you speak to others, but especially the words you speak to yourself and to your body. Because that will give you massive clues as to how much unresolved trauma and emotional baggage you're carrying around. So start tuning into that. Become aware. And if you find that you are telling yourself more negative and pessimistic and critical things than positive things, or the scale is like 30-20 or 80-20 or something, then make it a point to start turning that around. Start catching yourself. Keep a journal or just a notebook by your, with you for like three or four days. Every time you speak a negative thing about yourself, write down a mark on, on your journal or on your notebook. And then at the end of the day, add up, count up all the marks. You could be amazed at how much negativity and pessimism that you are speaking. Become aware of the nature of your words. And then gradually decide what positive words you want to replace the negative with. Gradually start replacing all of the critical words that you lay on yourself and critical words that you say about your body. Replace them with something much more loving and kind. You can be amazed at how quickly your body responds. So that's my suggestions to you for the fifth unconscious belief. I hope you enjoyed this conversation. Again, I know it's heavy. It's point, very directed and very like raw and hardcore truths, but they're important conversations to have. They're important things to become aware of, to start becoming aware of you. Learn to explore who you are. That's one of the things that your body is here to teach you. That's one of the lessons or the gifts that any kind of a health condition has to offer you learn to become aware of yourself that's what the whole experience of disease and healthcare and life and all the things is what it is all about is who are you learning to experience and discover you so share this conversation around with others Leave comments below in, in the comments with this with this episode. Talk to, about these conver these issues, these topics, and just explore. And as always, I have a gift for you with these episodes. Below in the description of this episode, you'll find a, a link to download the full PDF of all seven of these unconscious beliefs that I'm exploring here and, and, and talking about in this series. So download that read through it and take it to heart and start looking at how you're doing them. Where do you fall short? Make, take some steps to change them. So like this episode, share it around, subscribe to my channel, help me grow my podcast. And thanks again so much for tuning in and listening and sticking with me on this conversation. And until next time, take care.